They're two and zero in their conference right now, so they've lit it. They've, they've lifted the lid there. But in terms of Tennessee, they need to have this notch under their belt right now, going into the break. Big Orange looking to make it five in zero in the month of December. They are unbeaten here at the Food City Center in front of the Big Orange faithful. So giving the fans a treat right before the holiday break. First ever meeting between Tennessee and Tarleton State. Adu in the interior puts up his first shot. No doubt. That's good. That's good time for Tennessee, right? You know, Adu didn't have his best performance down at the Alamo against San, against NC State down in San Antonio. Wasn't feeling well, but that's a good sign for Tennessee that he turns around, gets that sweet jump shot. Here's the starting five that Joseph Jones goes with on the road. Familiar look. It's been this way most of the season. This core five. And they play well together, right? You know, this is a veteran group. They're not going to be intimidated to come into this environment because they played at the likes of Charlottesville, Virginia, uh, and they took them toe-to-toe -to -toe -to -toe with them, so they're not going to be intimidated. And it's Shinti off the mark. Josiah Jordan-James with the rebound. Here's the starting five for Rick Barnes and his crew. Very similar as well from that win Saturday over NC State. Josiah Jordan James hit five three-pointers on Saturday, his first attempt off the mark. Yeah, I thought Tarleton State got away there by going underneath the screen. When you've got a shooter, the likes of Josiah Jordan James, that is shooting it remarkably well from outside the arc, man. You've got to go over top of those screens. 7.7 points per game for James. First effort, though, off the mark. That'll be an offensive foul in a Sinti, the freshman Italian native. Picks up foul number one. Well, that's the type of aggression that you're going to see on both ends, right? Tennessee has that tendency just to blow up screens. How do you blow up screens? You get that defender coming in and attacking that high ball screen there, getting the hand in the cookie jar and knocking it away. Tennessee, uh, fortunate to get an offensive foul there. This could be with Barnes on him. Develop offense here back at home. James gives it away. And a foul after the pickup. With Gaddy possessing it. Yeah, so again, you know what's good for the goose is good for the gander, right, Andy? So you you uh, you got your hands into that cookie jar down there. So Tarleton State did a great job. You know, they have scouted Tennessee. They know that your side, George James, likes to get to that sweet spot, middle of the paint, turn around, reverse pivot, and shoot. Well, they got their hands in there and knocked away. And a lot of people may be in that holiday mentality, but these two teams, some of the best defensive teams, not just in the nation, you know, but in their conference as well. Tarleton State leading the whack, holding their opponents about 64 points per game in Tennessee. Fourth in Kempom defensive efficiencies. You see another steal there. Another steal. Uh, again, both teams are just going to hang their hat on playing defensively, especially given the fact that Tarleton State doesn't shoot it well from the perimeter, especially outside the arc, only making about six a game. So, man, they want to make this a slugfest, get this game into a phone booth. The defense from the Texans forces the errant shot from Vescovy. Just two points for the Volunteers, none for the Texans so far. Defense taking over in the early going. And there's the first one to roll for Tarleton State. Andre Gaddy, and a block at the other end for good measure. Like the effort by Gaddy right there. Really like that effort. Siegler, the smooth touch. Gets the ball back on the board. Well, you know, someone that's diminutive and, you know, in stature, man, he can get those shots off over the trees in the paint, man. He, he does such a really good job of just utilizing his speed and off speed to get those shots up. Talk about a fearless player. Still working back to that 100%, but played 39 minutes to Ziegler in that win. 20 points against NC State Saturday. And they needed every one of those. Every one of them. Shot rims away from Gaddy. James inside to Adu. Big point of emphasis offensively for Tennessee to feed the big man. Aiden's up to four. Oh, yeah, such a good touch, right? You know, Coach Barnes has made that that conscious effort to really get the ball into the interior and establish that first. As a big guy, Andy, you know, you got to work inside out, right? We do already up to four points, had just four, tied a season low on Saturday. Looking for a bit of a bounce back game. Quickly, James. Contact, no whistle. Here's Vescovy off the mark. Adu fighting hard for that offensive rebound. 
earns a foul. We'll keep it on Tennessee's end. We are rolling in Knoxville. Rick Barnes and his crew looking for another experience has been stepping in for his mentor, his former coach, Billy Gillespie. Unfortunately, again, Coach Gillespie, medical leave of absence, has been away from this team since November 19th. Joseph Jones, the assistant at the time, able to step up into his stead and take this Charleston State team to a 6-1 record since. That 6 win streak came to a close on Monday, but very poised in a, a situation that you're not expecting coming into the year. Has done a great job. Yeah, he has. He carries himself very well, right? Very well. Very well spoken, soft spoken. Uh, you can tell he loves the game, but he loves his players, right? You see that his players are buying into everything that he's preaching. Uh, you see it right now. This team is playing exceedingly hard because they've taken on that that mindset of Coach Jones. Wonderful, wonderful guy, wonderful visit. And if you have to have someone step in, if you're Billy Gillespie, it has to be the guy you coached who started 131 games for you while you were at Texas A&M. He plays... 13, 14 years overseas, just lives and breathes a game of basketball, comes back to your staff. It, it, it seems like a home run choice. Yeah, home run choice for sure. Actually played with a with a volunteer with a VFL and JP Prince overseas, and they talked about that journey. So just uh, an incredible story. Uh, kudos to Coach Jones. Uh, they've got a winner down there. Yeah, Joseph Jones stand out with Texas A&M back when they were a part of the Big 12, third in Aggie career list of points. Based off against Coach Barnes when he was at Texas. So a lot of memories between these two. The first one they're getting developed, coach on opposing sides. Yeah, and, and, and right now they're, they're they're creating a lot of havoc on the defensive end by Tennessee. They've got to tighten up some things, especially with the newcomers coming in with, with Ganey and Mayshack. Man, they've really got to get into the flow right now and take care of the basketball. There is Mayshack on the other end. Great dribble move from James. Nearly lost it in Tarleton State. Really strong defensive team. Here's the makeup of this bunch. Ganey almost gives it away. Tipped away from Barnes. Siegler's there. Three on the shot clock. Mayshack lets it fly. He hits it. Well, that's a better ball club right there, right? The Kai Siegler got the ball in the backcourt, brought it up slowly, had his eyes on the shot clock. Didn't panic, got it to a shooter in the right spot. Jamal Mayshack knocked it down. Mayshack coming off the best game of his season Saturday in that win over NC State. Season high, 11 points, five rebounds, four assists. He stuffed the stat sheet. And he really did. He does all the little things. You talk about a game within the game. It's the steals, the assists, the creation of turnovers, right? Everyone looks at a basketball game and thinks that you can only have your fingerprints in on that game if you're scoring points. Not so fast. Corey Smith missed one, followed his own shot, off it's a rebound, now he's at the line for two. Really like the Corey, man, you know, he's got strong, broad shoulders, man, tough guy, handles himself very well. Again, this is the type of leadership that Coach Jones is looking to have, you know, a coach on the floor, if you will, that's not afraid to step up, knock down the big time shot. This season for Tarleton State, as Ja'Cory Smith goes, go to the Texans. Averaging 15 a game, 15 plus point six of his last seven. But Steve, he only had six in that loss Monday against Jacksonville State. That was their first loss in seven games. Yeah, first loss in seven games. And man, he shoots the ball exceedingly well from the free throw line, almost 86 percent free throw shooter. So that's, that's unlike him to uh, miss the first. But you know, shooting the form right there, man. Nothing but net on the second. Smith has provided some big time outings, big moments this season already. Buzzer beater winner in a WAC conference game for Rio Grande Valley. This Tarleton State team 2 0 in conference play already. The WAC expanded to 20 games this season. They've already played two here in the month of December. Yeah, and it's a little unusual in terms of the SEC schedule that they're not starting right after Christmas and they're waiting until uh, the break to get started. Shot off the mark for Tennessee. A bit of a two-on-one break now for the Texans at the rim. Finishing Devin Barnes counted and won. Yeah, that's the right call by the official. You know, Ganey's got to do a better job of getting his feet together. You know, it, 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 one of the things that defensive-minded people have to do, if you look at this, either get yourself in a position to create that steal or just go straight up with the principle of verticality and don't foul. Don't lean into him with the body. 
It was a loss on Monday for Tarleton State to Jacksonville State, 65-62. Devin Barnes at the line here had a great outing. Career high 20 points for him in the loss. He can stroke it now. Don't, don't sleep on him. He can stroke it. We have 16 from the floor. Opens up his account here at Knoxville, his first three. Texans back within one. Hints pressure on Mayshack from Izzy Miles, who's into the ball game for the Texans. Here's James from the interior. No good board from Tarleton State. Good defense again by Tarleton State. Really making every shot difficult and challenging everything high. On the drive, Gaddy underneath. The Texans have their first lead. Now, that's how you quiet down this, this holiday crowd here at Thompson Bowling Arena, Food City Center, man. You go after them and attack. We're seeing just about every pass the Texans are heavily contesting. Yeah, they are. And again, you know, talking to Coach Barnes, you shoot around. They're going to be exceedingly aggressive when it comes to ball screens and getting into the gaps, getting in the passing lanes. And you've seen that time after time as they've caused a couple of turnovers here from the Volunteers. Dalton connect to the line for two shots. Can't hit the first. Connect looking for a bounce back game himself. Received heavy dose of defense from the Wolfpack on Saturday. Season low two points, just 19 minutes for him. So if you're the Texans, you look at that footage from NC State and you go, how did they play Dalton Connect? Did they really push up on him? Did they make him get away from those sweet spots in which he's so accustomed to doing? And I think, you know, the book could be out, man. It's just really pushed up on him and challenging. Maybe get him out of his game early. It's one thing that's important to remember, Connect, coming from Northern Colorado, hasn't seen a full scouting report focused on him or competition at this level. It is going to be an adjustment. Well, yeah, because, you know, you're, you're the best player on, on a top ten uh, basketball team, man. You've got a mark on your back, and they're going to go after you. Tobey Awaka, the swat. Escovy will settle it down on the other end. That is the presence Tobey Awaka can bring inside. But Vescovy giving it away, sweltering defense from Devin Barnes. Williams can't hit. And Connect will slow things down. Volunteers having a tough time getting around this Texan defense right now. They really are. They What Tennessee has got to do is Tennessee has got to get out in transition, right? You saw Dalton Connect right there just kind of look back and pull back on the range. Man, you've got to get out in transition to... to Really combat that defensive end. Some of those guys, it does not like the spotlight on him. It's about the people around him, his teammates. But, but such a cool moment to get to focus on Coach Barnes' career, rightfully being a nomination for the Naismith Hall of Fame. Well, we call him a Hall of Famer, right? So we, in our minds, he's already there and has been there for a number of years, just given all of what he's done for college basketball. You know, uh, kudos to Coach Barnes. I think he'll be a no-doubter, first ballot guy, and will be in that Hall of Fame. Such a cool moment with him and his granddaughter as well. That's one of the cool things about this team having getting to go to San Antonio and, and, and meeting NC State there. Coach Barnes got to see a lot of his family. Obviously, so many ties to the state of Texas. And a good moment right before the holidays for him to get to see them and then share that special moment. Oh man, to, to share that with your family just absolutely amazing. Oh, the back to that. Oh, knocking down three. Good feeling there for Dalton Connect. Had just two points Saturday. This team leader in the scoring department hits his first three. Dalton State again doing a wonderful job of setting cross screens underneath. Trying to get the ball to Dario Dominguez. Now Dario Dominguez, big, strong, physical guy. You know, you, he's going to back someone down and try to score over him. But right here, you just got a simple pin down screen. Man, you got to trail him or shoot through the gap if you're going to guard Dalton Connect. Sign inbounds for Barnes. Adu all over it. Barnes just has to chuck it away. Jackson, open lane to the hoop. Can't finish. And that may be the easiest route to the hoop that either team will see tonight. 
Adams connects strong to the hoop on the other side. It's going to stay Tennessee ball. Yeah, you want to see Don connect. Finish those, right? Again, against NC State down in San Antonio, dribble driving through that lane. Defensive minded teams are reaching in with two hands to strip him. So you want to see him or cuff that ball, right? And, and make sure that no one gets to that basketball without going through his arms. It has been a physical first 10 minutes here in Knoxville. Middle has separated either team so far. The Texans certainly came to run tonight. Adu inside, puts his body in the lane. Got it. Counted and one, Steve. Wow. wow. Coach Jones is beside himself thinking that that has got to be a charge. And it probably was. But I, you know, I, I need to see where the places were. Was the defender had a, had a foot on that, that arc, the restrictive arc there. Good job, good aggression by Jonas Adu, man. You know, you can talk about his lack of girth, lack of size. He can be physical when he wants to. And Coach Barnes has said repeatedly this season he believes Jonas Adu can be one of the best big men in the country. We've seen those flashes. Free ride, 29 points last week against Georgia Southern. 11.4 on the season to his best start offensively of his career. Yeah, Tennessee really needs him to play well uh, in big time games that are going to come about in the SEC. They're going to come about in March Madness. Uh, and, you know, this is the type of environment. You, you, people look at this game and they go, eh, Tarleton State against Tennessee, right? No, no, you've got to bring your A game no matter who you play, especially against a tough-nosed uh, team like Tarleton State. So Jonas Adu, man, again, this is one of those games that he needs to show his wares. Adu gets a deflection on that pass inside. Shot clock is at four for the Texans. Driving, falling, Williams, he traveled. That's a turnover. Forced by the perimeter action of Santiago Vescovi and the help of Zakai Ziegler. Tennessee is so good at getting into the gaps. Look at this. I mean, just when you think you've got an avenue to get there, you don't have an av avenue because Santiago moves his feet so well. Steve, in your opinion, are you seeing a, a bit more of an uptick in energy from this Tennessee team following that last time out? I am. I'm seeing it because I think that Coach Barnes probably challenged this basketball team. Are you going to be tough? Are you going to back down? Um, you know, we probably go and, and look back at uh, at a couple of possessions ago where Jonas Adu got he got knocked down right by by uh, Dominguez there So uh, he has got to do a better job along with the rest of the team of being physical and aggressive a Waka errant throw gives it away turnover from the volunteers Is there six turnover? Throughout the evening You can't hold him like that's going to go against Jonas Adu. It's going to be a second foul. Three keys for Tennessee side. Adu leading the way, six points in the early going. He provides that height inside. Tennessee does have the height advantage with this Tarleton State team that does like to play inside. You start losing big guys to foul trouble. That can make a difference. It can make a difference, but what makes Tennessee so special is that someone like a utility guy like Josiah George James can then slide lower uh, so they won't miss a whole bunch down in the interior. Barnes, top of the key. Shot clock is at seven. And that's going to be a moving screen call on the Texans. Right back to the Volunteers. So we were just talking about how this game is really physical, right? And the officials letting them play, but now... It is being halted a little bit, and, and uh, maybe it's getting a little bit too aggressive, and the officials are slowing things down. See, sharp move, finds Vescovy, connect, ball movement for the balls. How about that finish? So smooth from connect. Yeah, that's what you want to see right there. Don't connect, wrapped it up like a Christmas present, and capture the basket. Silky from Dalton Connect, who's finding his groove again back at home. He's got six, Tennessee on a 7-0 run. Awaka, strongest on the court with that swap. Yeah, fans would really appreciate someone like Tobey Awaka, right? Uh, you know, you are not going to back him down. He's going to do what he does. But look at this right here, man. That reminds me of the doctor. A lot of fans listening out there, man, the doctor Julius Irving with that finger roll there. But right here on this end, defensively, 
Tobey, man, is not going to be back down. He's not going to be out toughened, if you will. Great job of holding his ground. Dalton State has not scored in nearly three minutes. Defensive pressure has stepped up for the balls. Connect, though, overshoots that time. Open shot, Smith. Can't hit. Who's got it? Texans will have to slow it down. Williams inside, much needed. Like that, Williams solves the Kai Ziegler on him instead of taking him to the hole. Vescovy into the lane, has a foul call. Should send Santiago to the line for two. Hard nose basketball. Hard as we possibly can. Defense has always been at the forefront of our program. You know, offense, it comes and it goes, but as long as we have and play our defense well, we will always have a chance. Now, yeah, Joseph Jones, known for his defensive prowess when he was with Texas AM. and m Again, one of the all-time greats there in Aggieland. Seventh program history in block shots, so he knows just like Head coach Billy Gillespie, this is going to be what our team's cornerstone is. We're going to play physical, we're play aggressive, and that's that's almost sounds straight from the mouth of Coach Barnes. Really, it, it really does. And you know, when this game was scheduled, I think it was scheduled late. When it was scheduled, you want to see. Uh oh, nice, nice catch there, Andy. Nice catch. How about that? I like that. Christmas present, huh? Right at me. Come early. I like that. But when the, when this when this game was scheduled. You want this type of basketball game. You want the type of game that will get you prepared for conference play. And I think they will be exceedingly glad that they've had this game under their belt. That is Tennessee. Tarleton State is certainly not shy from scheduling hard. Obviously, Tennessee has done so. Third in strength of schedule. Tarleton State does it as well. They've already been to Virginia this year. Last year, they went to Waco, played the 2019 champion Baylor. And then... It, it, Able to uh, go to Gonzaga, go to Kansas two years ago. So they play tough teams every single year, it seems like. The move from Ziegler. Oh! Broke the ankles, knocked in the three. Wow, the step back between the legs. Knockdown jumper to Kai Ziegler. Volunteers by eight. They're on a 12 2 run the last three and a half minutes. Defense from Ziegler on Barnes on the other end. Shot clock's at five. Texans need a bucket and a Cinti off the mark. Don't mind that shot by Innocenti, right? Shot clock's winding down. Shoot it if you can while you got an open look. Those won't come too often. Ziegler again. Can't go two for two. And a foul on the rebound. Goes against Tennessee. You look at this play right here, man. Step back, catch it in the pocket, and knock the shot down. Nothing but nothing but nylon, man. That is a pure shot there. Tennessee fans, man, I'm telling you, they've, they've been waiting to see the guy get back to the form that he was earlier in last season. And I think you're starting to see it. That's one of those moves that no matter where you are on the court, you make that, you just got to let it fly. And if I try to make a move like that, man, everybody's <laughs> falling with laughter. <laughs> Ziegler made it look smooth. Tennessee by eight. Largest lead of the night so far. Smith trying to drive. Kick out. Williams and hit the three. Offensive of board. Gaddy working hard. Earns two shots. Really like the interior presence of Gaddy. Gaddy would not be denied. Didn't give up on it. Gives his chance, gives his team a chance to cut into this eight point lead by getting to the free throw line. Gaddy is this team's rim protector. And off to a career best year in his senior season. First free throw off the mark. You see the numbers, offensive rebounds, leading his conference a little over four a game. That makes such a difference. Makes a huge difference. He is that guy that, that gives them that inside presence. Over for 2, though, at the line. Crucial pair of shots rimming away. 
Gives you a chance to further extend. Escobie. Escobie from a long Go. distance. How about Santiago? Man, I, I, I'm telling you, any given night, any one of these volunteers can knock down that, that long-range bomb. The other end off the mark goes Barnes. Escobie thought about it, backs it up. Sheds a defender. Options, James. And Phillips cleaning it up. Will stay Tennessee ball on the baseline. When you look at this three right here again, Takai Ziegler drilling the ball, not necessarily into the into the interior to get a shot on his own, but looking to assist and get Santi a wide open three. Escobie with five points. Tennessee on a 15-2 run. They have taken over this game here in the back stretch of the first half. A chance now, some new faces to get in the game. J.P. Estrella, the freshman, checks in. Kate Phillips, also a fellow freshman in the game. Escobie again, step back, this time contested. And will not get the bounce. Off the shot clock. Good defense by Barnes. Closed out, didn't foul. High hands, contested high. Great defense by Tarleton State. Tennessee running some full court pressure during the first half. There's a trap right off the inbound. Ziegler and Phillips. Somehow, some way, Barnes gets it away. Williams can't hit the bunny. Gaddy cleans it up. Gaddy came in and cleaned it up. Good thing that he did not give up on that. Ends a three-minute scoring drought for the Texans. Try to hang around here late in the first half. Phillips, Ziegler, double team, gets out of it, throws it up for Estrella. What could have been there from Zakai Ziegler. And a hard foul as Vescovi tried to jump the pass. Really like the effort by both teams, though. You know, both teams not going to give up, not going to give anything easy. I love the effort by both teams right now. Again, for Tennessee, this is their last taste of game action until the new year, until 2024. January 2nd, they'll be back here in Knoxville against Norfolk State. SEC play starts the sixth, so you're running out of chances to get things ready for that next half of the season. Yeah, you are you're running out of chances and you also if you're one of the younger guys like the Kate Phillips or JP Estrella You're running out of chances to impress that coaching staff enough to get meaningful action Okay, he trusts you enough to get you in early in the first half that is coach Barnes Can you produce not necessarily scoring wise, but can you rebound? Can you defend so that he can count on you when the SEC play starts? That is the silver lining when you go back to that graphic we showed, showed right off the top how many different scoring threats Tennessee has. Depth is, is very strong with this Tennessee team. Minutes are at a premium. So you're right, a J.P. Estrella, a lot of eyes on him here in these moments in the first half. I'm sure you'll see him as well. Second half, as freshman, this is where they got to prove themselves. Ganey in the lane, a smooth finish. Jordan Ganey. Man, I like to call Ganey a smooth criminal, man, because he just, man, the baby face assassin. He looks like he's about 13 years old, but can give you 20. And a splash on the other end. Ja'Cory Smith looking to get in rhythm. Ganey again wants another. He's got it. Back to four. They really counted on Ganey out in the Hawaiian Islands, man, to, to, you know, score consistently and defend. And he had a little bit of a drought, but it looks like he's coming out of that drought right now. And Ganey averaged near 12 points a game his first seven performances as a ball, sitting about six points per game in his last four. Again, a lot of depth. Coach Barnes can ride the hot hand if you're not necessarily on your best game. You're not going to see as many minutes. You're not going to see as many minutes because you've got guys that can flat out do it. James a hard rebound. Tennessee wants to run. 
James, other way, off the rebound, earns two at the line. That's a fifth-year senior right there. You know that you've got oh, to get to the basket, but now you get all the way there, draw the contact. But that is where Tarleton State has made their living in the interior. That question was, how would it match up against a team in which they don't have the height advantage with, with Tennessee? They learned what happened in, in a game on the road at Virginia, game one of the season. They lost 80 to 50, so things weren't able to translate. But that was game one, Steve. A lot of time has passed since then. It feels like a bit more up to the challenge than they were at that first one. Yeah, each and every game is is a different animal, if you will. You know, looking back at that team and the way that they played against Virginia, it's it's a tale of two seasons almost, right? Because this team has gone through that maturation process. They toughened up and they played well. Full court pressure from Tennessee. Zakai Ziegler is going to get charged with the foul. Volunteers are trapping right at the inbounds. That's are not happy. Not something that you see Tennessee, Tennessee do a lot of, but they're trying to speed up Tarleton State and get this game right, out of that right. phone book that I alluded right. to just a little bit ago. They want to get up and down and make a faster pace. To get Jordan Ganey on that foul. It was both Ziegler and Ganey there on the trap. So that is the second foul on Jordan Ganey here in half number one. Devin Barnes is alive. Devin just calmly as an 80% free throw shooter steps up to the line. Big crowd, so what? You know, fist fight, rock fight, and I'm going to step to the line calmly and knock down these free throws. And Devin Barnes, fantastic addition to this team from Triton College, averaging a little shy of 10 points per game, has been a heavy contributor. Worked his way to that starting role. Ziegler, got about three. Gives it up to Ganey. He's got the hot hand. Not that time. Really like the offense. He had a double screen there to get Ganey open. Barnes drives in. Kiss off the glass. Great answer from Charleston State, right? The game was starting to get away from them just a little bit, but you get a stop on one end, and you get a basket on the other. Back-to-back -back baskets. Protections back within seven. Pump fake, Vescovy, open mid-range. Nicely done from the back. Here's here again. Older guy, used to these environments. He's going to subtly give you that head and shoulders fake, get his defender in the air and go for a blow by. And Asinti, freshman. Here's Gaddy. Finished. Texans have made their last few the turnovers. Ziegler not looking for the ball. Don't mind that. I don't mind the effort, though. Zakai Ziegler did not have that because he expected Josiah Jordan James to handle the ball and get up the floor. Texans in the end this first half. A positive note here. Ziegler almost will poke that away. Just such a tough defender. Shot clock at three. Hold it. Travel on the floor. Zakai Ziegler again, you know, he's just a nuisance on the defensive end. You know, you think that you've got just a simple dribble handoff action, and he just blows it up and creates that. That uh, hazardous situation for Tarleton State where well, the clock is running down. And Coach Rick Barnes is not said that Ziegler's even at 100%, but he feels more comfortable where we saw him last year. James for three. No doubt for Triple J. James. That calming, man, that calming presence for Tennessee basketball. You talk about a guy that's been through the rigors, been through the wars of the SEC. He can do it all. James with the board. At three for Josiah Jordan. James puts him over 1,100 for his career. Ziegler carrying the fight here at the end of the half. That's an and one. Sometimes you, it's best just to clear it out. You know, you go five out, let Zakai Ziegler do what he does, 
A couple of dribbles there, cross him over, get his feet off balance, get to the basket, lean in with that left shoulder right here, draw the contact for the and one. Ziegler hit four threes in the win Saturday, but made some game-changing drives in that game as well. So versatile on the offensive end and is an absolute X factor on the defensive side. Tennessee has pushed the lead to 14 here. 33 on the clock. And that is a double dribble. Jordan Ganey. Son of associate head coach Justin Ganey knows the way this team moves, knows how aggressive they play defensively. Stepped right in. He brings another level defensively as well. He really does. He brings that level of defensive intensity. So, you know, not only do you have marksmen on the offensive end, but you've got the likes of Jamon Mayshack, Zakai Ziegler, and Ganey, who play exceedingly hard on the defensive end that can create turnovers, leading to easy baskets for Tennessee. About a second separating. Shot clock and game clock. Ziegler going to take his time and hold for one final shot. He's got a team high seven. What can he make of this last possession? Two on the shot clock for Ganey. Has to get rid of it. Not quite. And that is half number one. Tennessee closes on a 7-0 run over that final minute and a half. Defensive intensity really took a jump up as well. Took a jump up. And Dante Bobeski and Zakai Ziegler. First ever matchup between these schools certainly has lived up to the billing so far. You're in the holiday spirit here in Knoxville. See those nice snowflake graphics at like the it. Food City Center. It's all the inflatable gingerbread cookies. Everyone in a good mood here tonight before the holiday weekend. With a physical 20 minutes remaining. Oh, the feed from James. Almost connected there with Adu. Good interior pass by your side, Jordan James. Adu, you, if you're Adu, you're looking to, you know, get that ball chin and go up strong with it with two hands. An improvement of energy from Jonas Adu. Just four points Saturday in the win over NC State. He himself, though, wasn't 100%. Had missed some practice leading up to that game against the Wolfpack. Had his valuable reps leading up to a big game. That's certainly going to cause an effect. They do now back six points, surpassing that four from Saturday. Yeah, uh, had a uh, uh, less than performance because he was feeling less than with the flu. And it really affected him uh, on both ends of the floor. As he holds possession, the offensive board it pops right back out to Sakai Ziegler. Connect. Driving in. And finish on the razzle dazzle attempt. Again, Tennessee keeps possession. Connect for three. Did not get the roll. Four opportunities there. You got to be happy if, if your coach Barnes that you hit the glass, got those offensive rebounds, but you need those to go in. Alton State in the road environment in Knoxville. They haven't been phased. Virginia earlier this year, their third matchup with an AP Top 10 team in the last three years. Again, it's going to take a full 40 minutes to stick with this volunteer team. Really like that move, though, with Lou Williams. Spun, uh, utilized the, the, the advantage that he's got over a smaller Santiago Vescovi, unfortunately, for Tarleton. Said he stepped on that baseline. Has to be an emphasis for both of these teams. Second half intensity. Tennessee came out of the gates flying against Georgia Southern last week. Not as stellar second half as Georgia Southern Eagles from Statesboro able to outscore them in that final 20 minutes. And that really got under the skin of Coach Barnes because he really wanted to get some valuable minutes to those youngsters, those four or five stars sitting over there with Vince that really wanted to get some meaningful action. Turnover from Tennessee. Leads to a three other end and a Sinti can't hit. Spoken for our first points here in the second half. Both teams will cold. James searching for the big man Adu stripped away. Once, once again, Adu. Strong hands. Get that ball up, pull it up quick. Charlton State will slow it down. Steals and turnovers. Seven steals now. For Tarleton State, they were able to rip that one away from Jonas Adu. 
Barnes lets it fly. That's off the back iron, off it's a rebound for the Texans. Can Smith get one to roll? No. A foul on the rebound. That's against Keandre Gaddy. Really like the actions by the Charleston State. Again, they're not letting this game get away. Great dump down pass there. But if you're Adu, got to be stronger to get that up quickly. Great pass by your side, Jordan James. You see where this team sits in terms of steals per game. So many different guys. It, it's not just one player who's playing aggressive on defense. It's a team unit. It's a team unit. It's almost as if Tennessee is playing against themselves right now. Maybe up strong, can't finish. Still rolling around. Carlton State has it. Still no points for either side here in the second half. Nicinti, James, giving him that right side off the boot of Meshach and out of play. I mean, neither offense can get in the rhythm here. No, no, and you've got some open looks from both teams in this second half. Neither team has knocked down a three, albeit that they were open, but everything else, man, has been a, an absolute struggle. Drive in from Barnes, Tobey, a walk-up. Huge rejection. Right back up is Smith. Still no bucket for Tarleton State. Ziegler, Vescovy, front iron. It is cold as ice as the winter night outside here in half number two. Man, the chill has really set in in this building in terms of shooting, and this is what concerns you if you're a Tennessee basketball fan, the, that drought that they're so prone to go through for two, three, four minutes and not score. Andre Gaddy finally gets us our first points in the second half. We're almost four minutes off the clock. Vescovy trying to end the drought. There it is. Santiago Vescovy coming off of that fade screen does a wonderful job of setting his feet, getting into that shot pocket and knocking the three down. Much needed for Tennessee. Vescovy, team leading 10 points now. That's his second three-pointer made. We've seen him put up a few with confidence and distance as well. Here's Gaddy baseline. It's so hard to go to work like that on Tobe Awaka. Tangled up. That'll be a whistle to finish to a break. Defense, Tobe Awaka. Always a good combo. Swatted a man. Uh, incredible character, incredible player. And I, I, I want him to pass me tonight. Steve, how do you feel about Vescovy having a fifth year to break your records? There an asterisk. Hey. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not one to bring up things like that. So, <laughs> do you have an extra year of eligibility in you, Steve? I, I, I've got a few. I've got a few minutes, maybe. Okay. Maybe. Can you hit the long range jumper like Santi has? That's about all I got left. <laughs> My range is in the parking lot. SVB is seven away from Steve Hamer, BFL legend. He may very well get that tonight because he's really feeling it tonight. Hey. Off the mark. Again, some offensive woes continue here at half number two. It's here's by 15. Texans shooting just 29% as a team, 10% from three. Smothering Tennessee defense. They've done a good job. They really have. Nothing has come easy for the Texans. Uh, you know, that's a good dribble drive there. Good spin move. Williams had to earn every bit of that bucket. Cuts things back to 13. Ziegler fouled on the drive. Up off the swat from Minnesota. Ziegler doing all that he can to get out of transition and push the pace there. But, but sweet Lou Williams, man. Great spin move there. Got Jamon Meshack. Off kilter a little bit there and got to the basket on the other end. Sakai Ziegler thought he was going up for that. I guess they called the foul on the floor. And they called the foul before the shot on Williams. That block is from Innocenti, so it wipes that effort away. Sorting some things out. 
Coach Parks is probably upset because the because Santiago was coming off the double screen there to have a wide open three. Try it again. That time best to be not open. A walk inside. Ooh, that's rejected by Gaddy. Now Ziegler is wide open from the corner. Can't hit. Over two. His first of the half. Escobie gonna take it. Tennessee will reset. Siegler off the drive. James. And then out again. Tennessee just cannot buy it here in the second half. Yeah, just not shooting the ball well in this second half. Getting exceedingly good looks, but not getting the ball to go through the basket. See the numbers here in the second half. Tennessee just one of 11. Kansas State not much better. Two of nine. We, we've seen defense just take over tonight, but right now it just feels like shots aren't falling. A miss there for the Texans. Neither team. You know, you, you certainly uh, see a very physical basketball game, but it's kind of wearing on both teams because they're having to struggle so much to get a good open look. And they're not knocking them down. Do you feel like you know either side can break through? I mean, you see what Tennessee has been able to do all season. That's the bread and butter of this team. Rick Barnes always has his team high in defensive efficiency. How do you break through a team as strong defensively like Tennessee and like Tennessee like Tarleton State. Yeah, well, we talked about Tennessee getting away from the defensive sets of Tarleton State by getting out in transition. Uh, you know, that's what you got to do if you're Tarleton State because you don't want Tennessee to get set. You get out in transition. Any kid hit the open three and still Tennessee just one made field goal here in this second half. Daddy in the interior, up strong on James. That is a strong bucket. Texans back to 11. Back to 11. So it was, you know, 15. They battled back. Tennessee is trying to get some distance, but they're not knocking down any other open look. Ganey on the drive. Really nice finish. Right on the right side. Yeah, slash into the basket. Sometimes that's what you have to do that, right? If you're not knocking down open shots, you get something going to the basket, perhaps draw a foul or get a deuce right there at the rim. Three point shot not falling. Ganey took it right to the 10. Vicente driving on Mayshag right to the hoop. Another good, strong finish. Vicente. Great dribble drive. Straight line drive to the basket. Tennessee trying to end the month of December on a high note. Have not been able to settle into their tempo. Half number two. This is my kind of basketball game here. I mean, just physical, tough nose, grinded out here. Good slash by Gang. You look for Tennessee to get more of that. Dribble drive, straight lines to the basket. You have your games where it feels like teams can't miss, and that is fun. When you purchase a ticket and you watch this Tennessee Tarleton State, both these teams play, you expect there to be games like this where it's going to be a grind all the way through. Ganey on the drive. Gaddy says no into the second row. And Gaddy making his presence known just when you think Ganey has gained the advantage to get to the left hand, finish high off of the glass. You got a shot blocker. They're waiting on you. This is the fourth block tonight for Keandre Gaddy. He is their rim protector. And it has been in the elite form tonight. Gaddy had seven blocks against Rio Grande Valley in a WAC conference game earlier this year. He's definitely familiar with this feeling. Shot off the mark. Smith recovering at the rim. Back to single digits here in Knoxville. They've done a much better job of out hustling and getting to the basket the second half than Tennessee. Tennessee is really settled for perimeter jump shot. Ziegler hits the deck off the dribble. Jump balls the call. It's going to stay Tennessee way. Hey, Tarleton State. Making this a game defense, and they're finishing at the hoop.
He made it safely on the plane, but also held it in his lap for the entire flight back to Texas. I mean, that is just the full experience. You, you go to the SoCal Challenge, you win the tournament, you got to get out of there, surfboard in the lap on the plane. Why not? Why not, man? TBS, Texas Boys <laughs> Surfing, man. Get it done, you win a championship, go ahead and celebrate. I mean, those are big early season wins that can help propel you. And they've seen a lot of big dividends from that weekend. 2 0 start in the WAC, playing tough here tonight. And it comes from good experiences like that. This is a new team, still a lot of new pieces. They're trying to get that chemistry. Moments like that are, are huge. Yeah, moments like that are huge to, to, to celebrate. Uh, that camaraderie, that coming together, winning a championship, that's big time. Again, this Charlton State team, 8-3 and three off of their best start since leaping in the Division I ranks. Back in the 2020-21 season, Billy Gillespie, their head coach, helped lead them to this realm, has done a great job. And in his absence, Joseph Jones has been stellar as acting head coach. And one second on the shot clock. Miles fires, does not get the rim. That's a shot clock violation. Might have been a shot clock violation, but that would be the Texans' 11th offensive rebound in this game. You know, so we talk about how do you stay, how do you stay within arm's length of this Tennessee team, man? You out hustle them. Uh, you get on the glass, create excellent second chance opportunities. I mean, you get the feeling the way that Tarleton State is not backing down on the road. Top 10 team, they've never beaten a top 10 team. Top 25 team in D1 program history. James lets one loose, he's open, knocked down. I feel like Tarleton State has that ability to make a really good run in their conference in the way. Well, there, there is a reason why they're 2-0. Uh, whoever picked them to finish six didn't see the team that we're seeing tonight. There's no way this team is going to finish six in the whack because they're well coached, uh, they're tough, uh, and, and, and they play well together. Texans still in that weird zone. you got to have four years completed before you qualify for NCAA postseason tournament action. So Tulsa State were to run the table in the whack. They would not go to the big dance just yet. Into the CBI the tournament last season, their first postseason action since jumping to Division One. We got to do away with that rule, though, Andy. That, I agree. That, that, that's just asinine when, you're, when, you're, when you are transitioning to the uh, levels, uh, Division One level. What's the probationary period for, right? Why do, why do you need to penalize these kids? These kids want a shot at playing in the big dance, and they deserve that shot. I feel like maybe if even that first year, but at this point, Tarleton State, they're, they're comfortable Division One round. This is year four, and that entry year seems a faded memory at this point for them. Do you, would, do you not think that the team that we see tonight in this purple could upset someone in the big dance? Certainly they could. Those March games, it, it takes teams that, you know, not afraid of a height disadvantage, physicality like we're seeing tonight. It, you run into a team on a bad day, this team could outwill you with ease. And still a lot to unfold the rest of the way this season. The state will start or resume, you might say, whack play. January 4th, already 2 0, their best start since joining the whack. Tennessee, they start conference play in the SEC on January 6th. And that's a bit different from years past. I'm talking to Coach Barnes, normally this Tennessee team, they're playing an SEC conference game at least before the new year, late December. Not this year, got to wait till the sixth. Yeah, you know, and you're going to see a lot more of that uh, when Texas and Oklahoma get into the conference next year. You're going you're gonna to see a lot more conference games. Big time shot there by Devin Barnes. Knocked down three from Barnes. Tarleton State continues just to hang around a bit. Back within nine single digits. Every time Tennessee thinks that they're dragging them out of that phone book, phone booth, Charleston State pulls them right back in. And now trying to create some space. Offensive board, Adu. James open. Can't hit again. Hit one already this half. James sitting with eight. Now two of seven from three. 
sometimes you see defensive stats and you think, well, you know, they haven't played a Tennessee team. Is this going to still hold up? Certainly could say yes. This Charleston State team, their defense, certainly for real. They are for real. And, and we talked about this before. The defense travels um, in an environment like this. When you're not shooting the ball exceedingly uh, well uh, for the duration of the season, they're only shooting you know, 28% from the three-point line. you got to do all the other little things to keep yourselves involved and at arm's length of a much more talented basketball team here in Knoxville. Ziegler right up on Devin Barnes. Ten on the shot clock. Texans within nine. Kick it back out. Three from Lou Williams. Pulls around the rim. Off it's a rebound again. Williams no good. Just could not get the friendly roll. Man, they really needed that one to go down. They would have been down by seven points. And then, you know, it's anybody's ball game. She still has to feel comfortable with nine where we sit. Zicaldi has not dropped off here in Knoxville. Adu, big man, going to work. His contact, he'll earn two shots. He'll be on the other side of this break. Dawson State, impressive. Stale in it, down nine. Open up the exterior, the, paint, the uh, shots from the perimeter, uh, and, and get them better looks. Now Tennessee shooting just 14% from the floor in the second half, and that's a fresh mix of this stout defense from Tarleton State, but also a few shots just not falling their way. Two of 12 from the three-point line. They do one for two. We saw it at the halftime break, Steve, but talking about what each SEC team needs for this holiday break. In your opinion, before Tennessee hits the new year, you hit that second half of the schedule. As Lou Williams goes to the line, what does Tennessee need the most? Consistent offense. I think that was so apropos, uh, so timely as, as, as they hit on that. That is every Tennessee fan's gift. Just consistent offense. Because you know, again, the defense is going to be there every single game. But when it comes turn time, NCAA turn time, if Tennessee, as they've been prone to do, have these droughts, will that lead to an early exit because they're not shooting the ball consistently from the perimeter? That's the danger. We talk about all those scoring threats that Tennessee does have. You know, on a night like this, you know, you know, it's not just one guy. A lot of different people are scoring, but offense isn't flowing as well. How do you differentiate, hey, we're, we need this guy to do this in this moment? Well, you believe in the elder statesman. That's why you got Zakai on the court. You got Santi on the court. You got Josiah Jordan James on the court with Jonas Adu, uh, the, the presence on the interior. You believe that the older guys have been through these battles and they can get it done and finish for you. Tennessee setting up offense. Bescovy, that pump fake. That'll be one of the best in college basketball, but cannot hit the mid-range. Well, the mid-range jumper, uh, it's a tough shot, especially on the baseline. When you look at a 10, 15-foot jump shot on that baseline, you much would have rather see Santi take the contested three than pass that up and, and, and take that tough two-pointer. Uh, two it's an eight-point game. Texans going to get back to six inside and getting it to go. Dominguez, the junior oh, forward. Dominguez really like his game. Physical specimen there. Back Jonas Adu down. Here's James right to the 10. He's got a double-double now. That's 10 oh, points, 10 James. rebounds. 10 points, 10 rebounds. Again, this is a guy that you count on in these late-game pressure-packed moments to get you a bucket. No doubt when you talk about consistency, Josiah Jordan James has been the most consistent on this team. And that is now the expectation for him and his team every single night is Josiah Jordan James. Isn't that right, Sarah? That's right, Andy. He, he's coming off of his best game of the season, too, in that game against NC State with 23 points, already in a double-double now. And Barnes says his consistency has been the best amongst our team. When you think about it, he's had his best offseason since he's been here. And I certainly think it's showing up right now. He said, I think it's really what he expected from himself and what we expected from him as well. And we need him to continue to do that and continue to lead and help bring these younger guys along with him. 
seventh double double of the season. Vescovy just having to let it fly that time. Offensive rebound. And Tennessee can calm it down. Six point game. Yeah, that, that didn't really like that offensive set, right? Ball stuck. Coach Barnes wants the ball passed and reversed. Make the defense move. Everything but in the hoop for Josiah Jordan James. Everything but in the hoop. And if you're a Texan fan now, all of a sudden you can cut it down to four. Right, here we go. You can send some energy on that Texan bench. And now the crowd here at Food City Center starting to get into it a little bit, trying to cheer on this volunteer defense. We've got a ball game here, final five minutes. Evan Barnes going to work. Let's one fly way too strong. Vescovy. One on three, earns the foul on the floor. That's not the shot you're looking for. That is absolutely, if you're Coach Jones, that's not the shot you're looking for. What you're looking for is to get the ball inside to Dario, uh, Dario Domingos. I mean, you, you see that he is a physical specimen. He's, he's calling for the ball on the block. You gotta get the ball on the interior. That type of shot will cause a, a coach's hair to fall out quickly. Barnes 10 points, but that one well off the mark. It's going to lead one and one opportunity for Vescovy. Catches in on the first one. And the Tears will take any sort of point, especially here at the free throw line. Seven for 11 now as a team. That stoppage in play also gives a chance for Coach Barnes to get more beef in the paint with Toby Awaka to battle against his counterpart, Domingos. That's going to be two for two. He's got 12 points. That's game high. Brown getting into it here in Knoxville. Trying to will this team into a holiday break. And he needs some strong defense here, final four and a half. Full court pressure for the eighth ranked team in the country. Charlton State never beat the top 25 team. Escovy, offensive foul, the crowd erupts. That's what Coach Barnes is looking for, that 94 feet of pressure. Knowing that the vet expectations for how he wants this team to play a full 40 minutes, certainly not a similar in a similar fashion not the way they wanted to come out of the locker room break yeah but truth be told you know there's a silver lining to everything right you know i'm a glass half full type of guy i think coach barnes would rather have a game like this going into the break rather than a blowout and not getting his guys a bunch of meaningful minutes again for tennessee it's their last game of 2023 how about that drive and finish Jordan Ganey's had some big moments in this one. Jordan Ganey is really stepping up, getting to the basket. That's twice now in the second half that he has really gotten to the 10 and finished. Nine points for Ganey. The lead is back to 10 for Tennessee. Going to close out the Texans. Trying to play spoiler. Williams will take the three. And that's off the rim, no good. Texans really need those to those shots to fall because they're running out of opportunities. With the way that they play defense, that makes Tennessee extend the shot clock. So they need those actions to result in shots going down. Great look for Vescovy. He found Ziegler. Two shots on the other end for Zakai. Games that these teams chalk up as it was a battle throughout. We talked about how physical it has been throughout. Two good defensive teams showing their worth tonight. Both certainly going to deserve some much needed rest. Yeah, they're going to need some R and R. They may need a trip to a massage parlor or something after this basketball game because it's been one of the more physical games that I've seen in person this year. In conference play on the horizon. As he starts SEC play on the sixth. We're at home against Ole Miss. That ball goes out of bounds. A turnover from the Texans. Very costly at this stage. But look who was in the middle of that. It's Zakai Ziegler. You know, he is running guys off of screens, 
he's getting into passing lanes and makes everything very, very difficult. Joseph Jones giving an inspection with that ball. Having a word with Josiah Jordan James. Joseph Jones done such a good job with this Texan team. A lot of experience with Billy Gillespie. Has done a fine job in his absence. It's going to be a game that Tarleton State will certainly hold with high regard as they go throughout the rest of their season. Yeah, you know, whether or not they win this basketball game and it looks like it's in doubt, you can hang your hat on that, right? The fact that, look, this is one of the tougher environments that we're going to play in all year long, one of the tougher opponents that we're going to play in, a top-10 opponent on their home floor, and we took it to them. So there is no reason why we can't use that to propel us forward to win a WAC championship. WAC play resumes on January 4th. UT Arlington at Tarleton State. One more non-conference game for both teams, though, in between. Old court pressure for the Volunteers. Innocenti finds Barnes, a little floater. He's finished, back to 12. I like that by Innocenti. Innocenti, reverse pivot, finding Barnes for the little floater. Good action. He's going to end the near three-minute scoring drought for Carlton State. Tennessee was on an 8-0 run before that basket. Now on the other end on Innocenti. He's number three on Innocenti and two shots for Sakai Ziegler. Tennessee can kind of salt this thing away from the free throw line where they've been very, very good tonight. Not not excellent, but they've been good tonight from the free throw line. That's going to give Sakai Ziegler double digits. Ten points, five assists. Again, really looking like the form he was in at the end of last year before that knee injury at the end of the season. Remarkable recovery speed to get back to where he is now. Full, full court pressure from Tennessee. Gaddy lost the ball. Awaka fighting him for possession. They're going to get Toby Awaka with the foul. Yeah, that's definitely the right call. He reached over top and fell over top of uh, uh, Keandre Gaddy. Awaka has given 21 hard minutes, just two points, but. Four big rebounds and four big blocks. Well, he follows that, and that's on the heels of, of you know, having 12 rebounds, a career high the other night uh, down in San Antonio. And such a good interior defender, interior rebounder. Offense is still growing every game. Three from Barnes. Last breaths here for the Texans on the road, and that one hits the rim and goes out of play. Legs are probably getting a little tired. Um, you know, they have uh, really extended pressure, exerted a lot of energy to stay in this basketball game. And it looks like the shots are not falling uh, here in the second half late. There's Ziegler. Right to the rim. Excellent moves. Excellent finish for the veteran Ziegler. That's what he just does so well. Just carves out space, gets to the basket. You know, for someone that size that can get amongst the trees and finish, that you know, he, he does such a wonderful job. Offensive woes throughout this second half, but Tennessee finding some consistency here at the tail end. 12-2 run over the last two and a half minutes. James rises up through the contact, no whistle. We'll go the other way. I like the no call. He's got the principle of verticality, just go straight up. Barnes in the corner, off the mark. A couple of open misses for Barnes down the stretch. He's got a team high 12. Will stay tall to the state way. And Steve is. State you were right. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be five blocks for Tobey Awaka matching. What Jonas Adu was able to do last year against McNeese State last fall with five blocks. Josiah Jordan James getting in on the effort as well. Big time rejections across the board. Welcome to the block party, young fella. 
defense from Tennessee fantastic throughout the offense couldn't find the rhythm defense helped them in several situations how about that feed again from Ziegler and he has had the handles tonight when he handles the ball like that it's almost to the point where it's unstoppable Andy you know because he's so quick he changes pace and changes speed and he just knocks the defender you know off balance and just goes by Walker adding to that total the presence they missed Several games early in non-conference play. Tennessee team that hasn't 100% been healthy through this stretch. Again, played one of the hardest schedules in the nation. Third in strength of schedule. Kind of particularly been their healthiest in that time. No, they haven't. You know, whether it be sickness or whether it be a slight injury, you know, they've dealt with that. But the depth really comes into play, and they can overcome some of that uh, uh, injury bug or, or sickness bug. One minute. Final minute here in Knoxville. Dalton State. Final efforts on the offensive end. Smith off the backboard. It has been a struggle from three for the Texans in this second half. Again, that's not typically where they make their earnings. Just two of 21 tonight overall. Yeah, the early returns were that they weren't going to shoot it well from the three point line, and that was spot on. Waka inside in Tennessee. They're going to get an extended break. They've got 12 days off. It's their final game of 2023. Have to wait till January 2nd to get Norfolk State. Again, another opponent like Charles State they've never faced before in program history. Yeah, another tune up, one last tune up before SEC play starts. And, you know, it'll be a ho hum matchup, right? No, no. Ole Miss is going to come into this place. I mean, they, they have done, uh, they, they've given a lot of teams all they wanted more. Uh, they played very, very well. I got a chance to see them down in San Antonio this past Saturday. They're well coached with Chris Beard. Uh, and man, it, it's going to be a matchup challenge for Tennessee. And Ole Miss into the top 25. They are undefeated with Chris Beard. His first season in Oxford. Certainly a challenge right out of the gates. It always is a challenge every night in the SEC. And then, oh, you go on the road back-to-back -back games right after Ole Miss. So, always, this is what nice. Coach Barnes says, you know, it's just there's not a night off in the SEC. Carlton State is going to run things down. The shot clock is off. Texans certainly a formidable challenge. They'll hold their heads high after really – Performing well defensively. It was a slugfest through and through, but the Volunteers are going to prevail at the end. The 5 0 month of December for Rick Barnes and his crew. Yeah, 5 0 month of December. Uh, they needed this type of basketball game before having those.